Collins. Uh, I'm an assistant principal here. I'm in charge of activities and um, the alphabet S, J through Z. So anybody that's in there, um, I would be your uh, assistant principal. Uh, but let me just go back before I keep typing. Keep working. Come on. Um, but what I want to step back before I get to um, about this process of the debate is, is that um, I was a student here at Arbetta West as well. I graduated a long, 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 long time ago, um, and when I was at Arvada West, I, please do not have your phone out while I'm talking, because that will really bother me. Um, one of the things that I did when I was here at Arvada West is I was on the competitive debate team, um, and it, I'm not telling you, I'm not kidding you guys, it literally changed my life. I was not very good at it, um, probably because I didn't take it as serious as I probably should have. I, you know, take like second places in competitions and things like that. I probably could take first and some of the stuff, but um, I wasn't as good as I probably should have been. Um, but I will tell you that for the for the short period of time, for the year and a half that I was on that team, um, it was an absolutely life changing experience for me. Um, unfortunately, here at Arvada West, currently we do not have a competitive debate team here at Arvada West, which is something that makes me always cringe a little bit because it's something that I think that we sh we should have. Um, one of the most powerful things that you're ever going to be able to teach yourself or learn, maybe not necessarily teach yourself, but learn, um, is how to speak in public. Because everybody in this room is going to have to be able to speak in public at one time or another. Whether it's you're going to be walking in for a job interview and you're going to have a, you're going to have a panel of people in front of you and you're going to have to speak to them. Maybe you're in front of a classroom of students or maybe it's... Um, you decide that you want to go to a public forum and have a conversation about clean water in your community or something along those lines. Uh, but you are going to have to be able to speak in public at some time or another in your life. And I, and I promise you, the more that you get comfortable doing those things, um, the more successful uh, that you'll, you'll be, the more opportunities that will be out there for you. Um, so as you guys begin to go through this process, I've seen the, the assignment that was out there. Um, that's been given to you guys. This is a great opportunity for you guys to be able to um, get a feeling of what it's like to have that public speaking process. Okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I get really crazy, super passionate about this. I get really super excited. So if I start yelling and screaming and hollering, it's not I'm not yelling at you. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. We'll, we'll get to it in a second. Um, but um, it's, I just get really, really, really passionate about this topic because, again, I, I just know what it did for me and I know what it's done for um, my students in the past. Um, one of the things that I want to talk to you guys real quick is what is a debate? And this is really, to be honest with you, um, something I, that I want you guys to kind of 
to, to think about for just for a second is about what really is a debate that you have. And we use that term a lot, like I debated with my mom about whether I get to go to the basketball game tonight or not, um, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when we talk about a debate here, um, in this process, um, this is, has multiple components to it. And in this case, a debate really is a set, and this is something really important for you guys to remember, this is really a set of logical arguments that you're going to have with an opponent. Whoa. Um, with an opponent. And what I mean by that is that you're going to have to construct something logical and, 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 ha and have a good foundation to it and be able to present that information to somebody else in, in an organized, well-thought-out manner. What, else, what is a debate? It's also, by the way, it's also a competition. You enjoy competition? Yeah. I know you enjoy competition. Anybody else here enjoy competition between somebody else? Oh, yeah, individual? right here. Yeah. <laughs> a debate is a competition. You have a winner and a loser, ladies and gentlemen. When you get up here to do this, you will lose. I lost a lot. I was good at it. Um, but I won sometimes. I won sometimes, too. And that, that, it, but it's the process that's the most important part. You will be debating. You will have a competition between you and somebody else out there or somebody or another team. And that's frightening for people because... Most of the time in our lives, we've been told at one time or another, oh, don't worry about it, you win or lose. It's okay. We'll give you a ribbon for playing really good at soccer today. That's not how it is here when, it, when you have a debate. You're clearly going to understand by the time you get done who the winner and the loser is by the end of your debate. I mean, I knew by the time I walked off stage and I had my opponent was scratched, I was like, oh, he got me on that one, or she got me on that one. And you just learn from those mistakes and then you move on. That's one of the pieces that's really kind of difficult uh, for people to be able to, to get around is that concept that um, there is a winner and loser to this pro process. What kind of debate are you guys holding? What kind of debate are you guys holding? Do you guys know? What kind of debate are you guys holding? A science one. It's based on science. It's the content. What kind of debate are you guys holding? Three versus three, yeah. so there's a component of three versus three out there, right? Yeah. That's a good point. What, what kind, you guys did a debate earlier in the first semester, what was that debate based on? What was that debate based on? What was the format of it? What were you guys simulating that you were trying to do? What was it? Getting a permit to mine. Get a permit to mine. What you were doing is what's called a public forum debate. And remember when I just talked about just a few minutes ago that sometimes what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to speak out in public. Sometimes you're going to have to um, address a group of people that you don't even know. Like, I don't know most of you guys in here. Um, which is a good thing, because if you don't know your assistant principal and he doesn't know you, that means you're not getting in trouble. Um, I'm just kidding you. Yeah. But um, a public forum, ladies and gentlemen, is when you are going to get up and present your argument to another group of people, and you're going to try to convince everybody else out there that your argument is the best argument to choose. You guys have already started this process. You did it last semester. So all we're doing this semester is really just refining that process. All we're really doing is just laying some more structural layers to that to be able to help you think about that process that you're going to go through. Okay? When you write an essay, when you guys write an essay, what's the components of an essay? What's, what's one of the components of an essay? Yeah, Emma? I know Emma, but she's not in trouble. I promise you. Emma? Um, the main idea. Okay. All right. So you have your main idea, right? And you're going to have that main idea in your uh, public forum speech as well. What else is there? Yep. Evidence. Evidence. When you write an essay, you're going to have evidence. And in this case, we're going to have three cases of evidence. And then what else do you have when you write an essay? Oh, What's the final piece? Conclusion. Ah, beautiful. And the last thing you're going to have, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a conclusion. When you do a public forum debate, that, ladies and gentlemen, is all you're doing. So don't get scared. Don't get scared like when you see that you guys got a pink piece of paper out. And you guys have this, and you guys get all nervous and scared, like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can do all this. You've been doing this your entire lives. 
You just have it constructed in the sense of that's a, that, that's a verbal expression of that essay. Does that make sense? So don't get, a, don't get nervous when it comes to that piece there. The next piece, when we look at what is a debate, what do we have to have for that debate? What do we have to have for a debate? We have to have what? Somebody said earlier, back here, someone said 3v3. Who said that? What's your name? Kaylin. Who about that? Kaylin. Kaylin. Kaylin said we have to have a 3v3. He's right. You have to have an opponent, right? It doesn't make much sense to be able to, you know, debate against yourself. You, you hopefully, hopefully you always win. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you have to have an opponent. Let me, let me see a show of hands real quick. How many of you guys have ever gone, come home late? Your mom says you got to be home by 5, you show up at 6. Your mom says you have to be home at 10 at night, you show up at 10.30. How many of you guys have ever done that? How many people have ever done that before? You have not? Okay. So, let me explain this, what is a debate when it comes to the opponent in this sense. In this sense, what a, an opponent is, is just like your mom when you come home late. When you come home through that front door, right when you get ready to walk in, your mom is now your opponent. Right? Because she's going to ground you. Or he, is going, or your dad is going to ground you. Right? You've got to figure out a logical argument to defeat your mom to make it so you don't get grounded. She's your opponent. That's the same thing when we come here when it comes to this debate. There's a few separate rules that I want to make sure that you guys pay very close attention to when you guys look at this public forum debate and when it comes to your opponents. Number one, you're trying to defeat your opponent. You don't want to lay off, you don't want to be nice to them, you don't want to do those kinds of things. But at the same time, you don't want to badger them. You don't want to yell at them, you don't want to curse at them, you don't want to point at them. Those kinds of things. And here's, when it comes to the, the debating with your opponent, here's something I want you, want you to Tattoo inside your brain. Don't ever forget. You are a debating argument, or you are debating ideas, not people. Understand? You're not trying to make it personal to the person. You're trying to make it personal to the idea. Make sense? So when we do a debate, when we do a debate and we're sitting here going to be debating, we never look at our opponent. Because I don't care what my opponent looks like. I don't care that she's got long hair, or that, you know, that she's shorter than I am, or that I'm better looking. Okay? I don't care about any of those kinds of things. What I do care about are all of her ideas that she has. Okay? And that's the most important thing when we talk about the, the, those opponents. And I want you guys to remember that. We're not debating the individual. We are debating the ideas. And we're trying to persuade the people about those ideas. Okay? And that's just like the same thing when you will go across through the door with your mom. Same exact same thing. Um, when you go through that door with your mom, you're going to be debating with your mom about those ideas. Okay? Did you come up with some ideas about why Arvada West is better than Ross and Dolly? Yeah. Okay. We're going to try a real quick simulation. Real quick, simple, super simple, and then I'm going to move to one more point and then I have to go. I guess some more people just to suspend, so I can't I can't leave that thought. Um, I'm totally just kidding. Well, you guys are really a hard crowd. He's such a liar. Really hard crowd this one. All right. So our debate that we're going to have. I'm sorry. What was your last name? What was your name again? Shelby. Shelby. I did that. I knew that. Um, like, like the car. Um, so Shelby and I are going to debate real quick. And we're going to have one thing that we're going to debate um, about RV versus Arvada West. Okay. Um, she's going to try to convince me that Arvada West is a better place than Ross and Bell. Shelby, would you like to go first or would you like to go second? Would you like to go second? Yeah. This is an important piece, ladies and gentlemen. You always want to go second if you can go second. Why? Just like with your mom. You can take notes off of the other person. Take notes off the other person. What else? Because you've been questions of, like, why um, Arvada West is better than No, we don't want to humiliate them. <laughs> but you want to create questions and ideas? Good. No, that's good. What else? I mean, basic, simple. Think, think simple. Yeah. Backfire their own ideas. Okay, backfire their own ideas. But just like when you're talking with your mom, you want to have the last word, don't you? Don't you want to have the last word? No one ever wins a fight having the first word. So you want to have the last word. Good job, Sean. You are smart. Um, all right, I will go first. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm a graduate of Arvada West. 
I can't stand Ross and Valley. I can't stand Pomona. Even worse, it's worse for me with Pomona. But um, I am pretending, so just bear with me, I'm pretending that, that I believe that Ross and Valley is better. Um, I, Sean Collins, um, I, Sean Collins, affirm the fact that Ross and Valley is a better school than Arvada West. The way that I will show that to you is through the evidence of testing scores that the two schools take. Both schools, by the way, take the ACT. Now it's been changed to the SAT. But both schools take the ACT at the same exact time under the same exact situations and conditions between the two sides. They have the same general population of the two sides. They both come from the same region of Arvada, Colorado. Um, they both have similar uh, backgrounds and culture standpoint. However, Ross and Valley is better than our Battle West. Ross and Valley's latest ACT scores from the Colorado Department of Education was a 24.3. Our Battle West, 21.4. So therefore, we can only conclude one true fact when we're looking at this. And that is, Ross and Valley is a better school than that of our Battle West. Thank you very much. You may begin. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you may begin. <laughs> Would you like to yield your time? <laughs> Go ahead, just read what you have to do. I feel like he's trying not to laugh. All these are great ideas. Uh, just take one. So, Arvada West is better than Ross and Valley. Keep going. we got about one more minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, we can go talk about diversity. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll stop right there. We don't, we don't want to mess, we, we, we don't want to hurt Shelby too much. Ladies and gentlemen, Raise your hand if you think Shelby won. Awesome. Awesome. How many because those are all your friends. How many of you guys think that I won? I don't think you won. Oh, you guys are you guys are all biased as why. Well. Alright. Here, here's the point that I was trying to make. Here's the point that I was trying to make with this. If you notice, I didn't talk directly to Shelby. I tried not to. I looked away I looked for a direct way from her. But here's the other point I wanted to make when it comes to what is the, a debate. All evidence is not equal. Who did I cite for my evidence? Who did I talk about in my evidence? The Colorado Department of Education. Would you not say that they're an expert when it comes to figuring out what our test scores are? Yes. I would say so. That's a credible piece of evidence. Who did Shelby use? I let her use her computer. Who did Shelby use to determine her, her diversity? And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Shelby is 100% correct. Arvada West is way more diverse than that of Ross and Valley. And she made a great point with that, and I wish she would have followed up with it, with evidence. But who did she use for her, uh, her source? Her. She used herself. And that's, but, you, but you did a good job with that, Shelby. Um, so my point is, ladies and gentlemen, that not all evidence is going to be created equal. And you need to remember that, okay, when we go through there. All right, so one last thing I have to say that I need to get out. I know, I get so excited to talk about this, I can't stop. Um, one of the other things I want to talk to you real quick, guys, about this is that um, what is it that it taught me? And I'll, I'll just kind of sum it up like this. What is it that it, it taught me? It taught me, to be honest with you, the, this, this process. It teaches me the engagement with others. Most of your assignments that you're going to have, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be, in, in when you're in high school, will be up there, you talking to the audience, and the audience will be down there on their cell phones and not truly engaging the process. Debate will force you, huh Shelby, to engage. Yeah. It's going to force you to engage the process. You're going to have to be there. The second thing that it's going to do, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to make you think logically. No more of just, well, I think. You have to believe it and you have to have evidence and you have to prove it with that evidence. The third thing it's going to help you do when you walk through that door, and mom's standing there, 
you're going to be able to predict all those questions, all those concerns that mom might have. That's what the debate will do for you. It will allow you to not only think logically, but it will allow you. Thank you. Yeah. It will allow you to um, think ahead and process this information and think about what it is that your opponent is going to say. Okay? So if I had to combat Shelby, I would have known that she would have talked about diversity. Absolutely, because this is a great school that has awesome diversity in it. So I would have predicted that already and had to try to have some sort of comeback for Shelby during that process. And last and not least, ladies and gentlemen, um, it feels really, really good. Just like if you're a wrestler and you're wrestling and you're in that competition, it feels really, really good. Whether you win or lose, it really does feel good. Now, it sucks to lose. I am so super competitive at everything I do. Um, but it does feel good to know that you were able to construct those arguments and that you're able to, to um, push forward. Because it is, it's tough, guys. Life is going to be tough out there. And that's, this is one of the processes that I'm, I'm telling you will be very, very beneficial to you. Okay? So that's pretty much it for me. I apologize for talking to you guys the vast majority of the time. It's just I get so super excited about this stuff. I will tell you this. I will try to put it on my calendar to pop in now and then to the different classes. And if you guys want to throw things at me when I come in, I'm happy to sit down with you and talk to you guys about different processes. This is going to take a ton of work. And time. Because it's not something that you can just whip out, is it, Shelby? No. You're going to have to know what you're talking about, huh, Shelby? Because yeah. it feels really awkward to sit up there and not know what you're talking about, huh? Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with somebody who knows what they're talking about. It feels really awkward. Okay? Any questions for me? Please feel free to ask, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm here for. You have a question? Any questions, concerns, gripes, complaints? Are we sure? Okay. Um, like I said, guys, I will. I'll, I'll stop by again some other time. Okay. I'll put thank you guys very much. You guys are an awesome class. You guys are great. So thank you guys very much. Go away, West. Good job, Shelby.